Welcome and thank you for being here with us today. You're tuned into the TA Saturdays. I'm your host, G Singh. And on today's call, we're going to have our TA gurus, Cryptix and GeForce, going over their technical analysis. They'll be showing us their charts, looking at some indicators, and seeing what's going on in the markets, both on the crypto and on the legacy side. So without further ado, I'm going to invite on and bring up Cryptix to start off the show and uh, show you what it's all about. Over to you, Cryptix. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Welcome everyone to TA Saturday. Um, another installation for everybody. And I want to get right into it. So we're looking at BCB, GMX, and INGI today. Uh, oh, ING, GSD. Um, but firstly, because of the news and some giga news, um, I just wanted to first have a look at XRP. Um, because as we all know, there's been some uh, development in the lawsuit versus the SEC with them, some very positive, not just for XRP, but pretty much every single alt out there now. Um, so without further ado, let's actually look into the TA aspect of XRP. So it's kind of actually on that news, it's literally melted through every single level that I had set out because I covered this a few streams back. Um, and all these squiggles are actually from the other stream, and you know, e even without the uh, um, even without the news re XRP, uh, I predicted that we were going up anyway. I just did not expect it to get melted out in just one gig, gig candle. So now we're actually going to have to uh, create some new levels. So we're going to do that live for you now. Uh, let's have a look on the monthly and just to see where our our new resistances could be. So <clears throat> straight on to the monthly. Uh, we've got one there, one there. Yep, so we got one level there from this reaction here, which has already reacted pretty well. So let's go ahead and draw that there. And let's bring it down a bit. Let's bring it down. Let's for safety go for there. Let's do that monthly resistance. Uh, we're going to have one here. Now let's go back to the daily. Perfect. So these are the next few levels that I'm expecting to play out now. Then um, these are, I mean, it, we're uber bullish now. So if it was me personally, uh, I'd probably start DCA in on spot. We're currently at a monthly support, which has already seen some buyers. Um, so it's acting as a very good support now. Uh, my expectation is probably over time, uh, especially with the, with the news with XRP, is to just start kind of ranging upwards i don't know if we're going to go straight up uh, but this kind of uh, uptrend is pretty much with a high probability so <clears throat> the only problem again is uh, is bitcoin uh we we, we noticed a drop in bitcoin uh the other day from the highs um so if bitcoin starts to trend towards 28 28.5 28 then xrp could potentially come back down to this level at 0 0.5839 um let's have a look at our fibs <clears throat> yeah it's not working let me do that one there we go so straight up to that candle let's see where we might want to buy okay so the golden channel is around this monthly support anyway so potentially we could see a big dip to around 0 0.5120 on XRP, uh, which would test these highs here. But given the news, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think we're going to, uh, at the max, reach the support here at 0 0.5830 ish. Um, but if you were, if you had spot and you had some spot holdings, definitely hold this coin now, because um, especially going into next year, this coin could probably go uh, very, very high. Um, but we're currently at a support level now, so if you wanted to start DCAing in, now would be a good opportunity. Just spread your bids out down to the support, don't go all in. Um, and in terms of selling, you probably want to sell incrementally. So uh, what's the distance between these levels? 
So you're living that up, that's a 16% and a 30%. So sell incrementally 25% at each level um, and then hold some for a moon bag up to up to all time high. But that was XRP. Um, again, super bullish now. Um, it's definitely a portfolio hold if you haven't already. Um, so let's go to BCB. Um, so congratulations actually for anybody who was accumulating this. Um, it's had a very bullish impulse up to this sell region. Um, and you can actually see by looking at the candles, so sellers have started to absorb the buys now. You can see the the these the small bodies, large wicks. Um, so this kind of zone that I created way back is kind of now doing its job. It's seen some sort of uh some sort of supply level now here so if you're holding bcb i would potentially you know trim some of your holdings um it never hurts to take profits you know at least cover your initial buy-in uh, and then you can always buy again lower down um to be fair above if it starts then trending even higher above this level i don't particularly have any data to go off in terms of where this might go so it's just a hold. Um, if you have anything left, a small bag, you could probably hold moon, but definitely, definitely trim some to, to get your profits now. Um, especially after seeing these candles, you can see sellers are starting to sell. Um, it looks like, uh, you know, a potential distribution to people. Um, but yeah, congrats from buying here. That's a massive, uh, what is that? That is a lovely, say if you brought at the breakout here, that's a lovely 64%. No, more, it's more. Uh, <laughs> nearly a times two of your portfolio on that one. Um, so, yeah, kind of kind of jealous I didn't get into that one. But, yeah, congratulations on that one, guys. Um, over to GMX. So, GMX had a bearish retest here of this trend line. So, that's a nice bearish retest, which is pretty much kind of a uh, little bit bearish retest there bearish retest um given bitcoin's weakness at the highs and its dump um we could see lower we could see this support hit again um which could then take us higher let's bring some fibs in here Yes, so that is in confluence with the golden channel. So if that was the high there on that bearish retest of this trend line, um, then to load up on this, I'd be expecting around around uh, 49 to 47 on GMX uh, to load up on spot, uh, ready for the next impulse up, which would coincide with a drop on Bitcoin down to around 28K if that happens. Um, I mean, theoretically, we could just keep trending up like this but let's have a look it looks like yeah it look it looks more weak to me to be honest look at the volume it looks like we're decreasing so price is increasing but volume is decreasing overall so this Infl this suggests buyer weakness and buyer exhaustion so a drop is more probable than this trend eventually this trend i think is going to weaken out um so if you are a holder of gmx definitely trim some now if you're in profit and load back up around the 61866 channel at 49 to 47. um the, the time to short was up here um around this trend line so don't be shorting now if it comes back up to this trend line watch it though um because if it does impulse up if we is you know say if we have a, an impulse on bitcoin straight to 34k um then it then gmx will melt through this uh this uh this trend line so if it melts through this trend line it will hit this level come back down and it'll either go back again or that will be a deviation back down like that so we'll see what gmx does at the moment it's it's not a trade wait for the 618 channel um for the best probability buy-in or if you are a holder certainly trim some profits now uh, you don't have to sell everything just 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 trim um let's go to inj so inj uh, let's have a look 
So this looks like a double top to me. Um, so double tops where we have one top there and another top there. Um, and I don't usually use it, but let's have a look at the RSI. So let's have a look at the relative strength index. So we had a high there. Yeah, so this is definitely weakness. So um, for those of you that don't use RSI, RSI relative strength index indicates potential um, buyer or seller exhaustion. And it looks like we have a bearish divergence in the RSI here in confluence with the double top. So uh, let me show you what I mean. So let me get that trend line. So we've got, so here we made a high. RSI made a high. We've come down. We've come all the way back up to the same level, but RSI made a lower high. So this suggests buyer exhaustion to me. That's coming down uh, like that. And let's get rid of that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's the same. So this is this definitely looks like a double top to me. Um, so it looks like we're coming back down to this 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 now daily support level. Um, I wouldn't buy it personally. Uh, let's bring some fibs into this. What should we do? Let's do it from this structure here. Yeah, there's not really a trade for me at the moment. Um, let's bring the fibs back from a larger market structure. Yes, yeah, so I would preferably be waiting for a big dump down to the 5.3 to the 4.847. There are some supports here if you wanted to scalp. So if you wanted to scalp, you could buy here for a potential support and resistance play. Because what we could see is just your standard uh, range play now. It could just keep doing this. Um, but because of this double top, I'm expecting new lows. Um, I'm, ex I'm certainly expecting new lows, um, but then that's contradicted because of the bullishness for alts now. So it's it's a very tricky asset at the moment because although we're looking at a bearish retest and a double top, it's very unpredictable because you think how many shorts are actually piling in here now. Everyone's going to be shorting this thinking it's a double top, but what if the market makers want that liquidity, run both these highs? and then deviate down. So I don't know if it's a short either. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be shorting alt, especially given the XRP news. I would probably wait until the next, you know, just play it level to level. So buy here, if we start to trend down, cut it, and then buy around, buy around a level there or a level there. Um, if it does this though, if it does what market makers like to like to manipulate everybody, it'll run these stops, deviate somewhere up here, and then you can short it back down for new lows. Um, but it's a tricky asset actually. Um, I don't know whether this is kind of uh, a red a red herring. It's kind of gonna uh, kind of convince people to short, and they'll just be used as be used as stop loss liquidity. Not sure on that one. Uh, it's not an asset that I would particularly trade. Um, but yeah, that's INJ. Uh, there's actually not much more for me to go through. Um, does anybody have any questions or any charts quickly that they'd like me to go over? Okay, so we've got one coming in. So how how does Bitcoin look for the short term? Let's have a look. Uh, well, Bitcoin, so don't know why this was a big dump here. I, you know, from this impulse up, it looked to me like we could have continued up. Um, somebody clearly wanted to use that as exit liquidity, but we're still in this silly range. It, it to me, it looked like a diamond top reversal pattern. Uh, and you, you can look that up diamond top it, it, it's an almost like a diamond it's very 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 choppy very choppy there's, the, there's kind of no acceptance above or below um it looks like a ridiculous compression um short term it looks like between 29 and a half all the way to 31 um so you could scout that level to level you could just keep ranging it but eventually one of these sides are going to give out and whatever the result of the expansion is, that's going to be, is, is, is going to be uh, uh, pretty significant. 
So if we end up losing this level here, 29 and a half, I would certainly be expecting 28 and a half here, where I'd be loading back up heavily on spots. Um, if it ends up impulsing up, my next level is going to be nearly to 35k, but short term, it's it's very unpredictable. Neither side, both buyers or sellers, want to want to see it through. There's it, there's literal exhaustion on either side. Um, but given this diamond top, my bias is certainly down. These wrinkles are from the last stream. Um, I think certainly we need to go to 28 and a half uh, before we continue further up. But given the nature of this market, um, it, it is very, very difficult to say. There's just not a lot of directional focus at the moment. Um, but just, just literally play the range. I wouldn't have your stop losses too short under here because what you might get is a standard liquidity hunt. It might go down, go like that straight away and then send it back up. Because this is Bitcoin we're talking about. So, you know, it, it's very unpredictable. But if I were a buyer, 28 and a half is certainly where I would be looking uh, at buying. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much Bitcoin. We'll we'll just see how it resolves. It, could, it might just keep going at this range again for many, many months. Um, but yeah, that's Bitcoin. Awesome. Thanks for that, Cryptex. Really appreciate that. I think that concludes it for yourself there. So again, thank you for the coverage over there. So moving forward, uh, covering some of the, the crypto and more so focus on the legacy markets, we have GeForce uh, doing his technical analysis. So over to you, GeForce. Thanks, G. Um, good Saturday for everybody. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to uh, have a good time to get outside for a little bit. Okay. Um, as G says, like the legacy markets, um, mostly uh, the S P five hundred is what I focus on, um, and you can see in the daily dose of my weekly options with S P five hundred. This week, it hit two 52-week highs again. You can see on this chart, uh, my charts are always daily charts, and uh, the daily chart to me is king on pretty much everything. So you, you'll look at uh, Friday was a, a red candle that dropped down a little bit, but the intraday, it hit a 52-week high. The previous Thursday, the day before that, it hit a 52-week high. So the legacy markets are on fire. Um, because of crypto news and the, uh, the Ripple uh, uh, judge ruling uh, is a possibility. Um, the other mix in this game is BlackRock. Uh, getting their uh, Bitcoin ETF, uh, it'll get eventually it will get approved. We know that, but uh, for for now, both like legacy markets are using that as an excuse to go on. Um, we also did have on Friday the banks did uh, their earnings, so we are starting earnings seasons, and banks of course made money uh, on on all of this. So that also popped the market up uh, first thing on Friday morning. So what you'll see, though, is Monday, they came within two points of hitting uh, the black line, which is a standard deviation line. Uh, as, as folks know, uh, if you've been following me for a little bit, I do uh, use Bollinger Bands. So that standard deviation line, on Monday, it came down to it within two points. And it popped up the rest of the week ever since. It actually made a, a big gap between Tuesday and Wednesday's open, and another big gap between Wednesday's close and Thursday's open. Um, as I said, uh, last two weeks is that in legacy markets, uh, the gaps are always filled in. Um, you can see that uh, the week before we had two gaps. This was uh, Wednesday, and then gap down on Thursday's open. And then Friday, it filled in that gap, okay? Even though it was an intraday range, it's still, the gap was filled in. Um, and that prior week filled in the gap of the previous week, which was uh, a Wednesday to a Thursday. So I'm expecting this coming week, since it's earnings, uh, the earnings season started, uh, it might not fill in. Next week, but the week after it, these gaps that that we had will probably be filled in. 
Um, so I'm looking at that. You also see that uh, on Thursday it closed way above the 2x uh, upper, upper band and it never hit the 3x. Uh, rarely does um, SD hit the 3x band uh, because that would be extreme, extreme overbought um, in this case, or it would be oversold if it was in the, the, the 3x band. Again, on Friday, it never hit the 3x. It hardly ever does. So it, it comes back and it almost came back down to the 2x line, which it did on the closed. Um, so that's the SP 500. Uh, again, we'll see what's going to happen next week with earnings season starting and we don't know if these gaps will be filled in next week or the previous week, but these gaps will be filled in eventually. Um, I'll move on now to uh, the DXY, the dollar index. Uh, a lot of people like to follow that that are in crypto. Last week, I talked about how we have a drop and it is getting uh, down to the uh, lower band. And obviously, it just keeps on going. We, we've had it basically what I, I would say was a run up and then it cleared that standard deviation line and then it dropped. It dropped below this level around a little bit under 102 and then it just it just kept going. So the dollar is tanking. The euro is going up. I don't know if that is because uh, it's summer and everybody is taking their summer vacations to, to Europe, but the euro popped and the dollar went down. You'll see, though, that the dollar went down on Wednesday. Uh, it, it drove through the, the 2x lower band, and it actually touched the 3x lower band. It opened at that level on Thursday, and then it touched the, the 3x band again, all the way down to the um, below the 99.90 mark. And then Friday, it tried to recover a little bit because of the extreme issues. Um, and all the way down to the 3x band. So I expect the dollar to kind of uh, just melt along here, not doing much, just a bit of a malaise. Uh, again, we have uh, U.S. policies. We're printing money like crazy. Uh, we're bailing everybody out. So the dollar could actually just continue on in a downward spiral. But... Again, earnings season, they see U.S. companies are making money and things of that nature, then the, the dollar index would rebound a little bit on that. My last chart is a Bitcoin. Um, it's just of the same, <laughs> we got the same pattern. I noticed this too uh, in the Discord. Cryptic said, look at this pattern. And I noticed it too on uh, the previous days, but I never communicated with him. But but he and I are on the same point of this. It's a diamond pattern with, with Bitcoin. So you'll see that um, in both our charts. For me, I really noticed it because a few days ago, we have the, uh, the bands coming close. When they get close and very narrow, and you'll see the 2X band and the 3X bands, they're all very narrow. That's price compression. And you can see all through all the way back into you know, June 21st, June 23rd, price compression. It's in this range, so you know something's going to pop. Uh, it did pop on uh, the Ripple News uh, XRP situation, and then it dropped back down. Um, for me, when Bitcoin does hit the 3x band, I and I also look at the RSI to see if, if that is uh, overbought. Um, I'm expecting a pullback. So sure enough, on Thursday, it popped up, went way above the 3x band. Even though the bands are narrow, it went above the 3x band, and then it dropped back down. So, But it did drop back down to the lower 2x band. So I'm interested to see if we're going to get a, a fall through on that sell-off. Or it's going to just have a wider range now, but still go sideways and have a wider range. Uh, that's something I'll have to look at. But if I see it drop to the 2X band and then the 3X band, then I expect some sort of pop back up. Some sort of support level at that point. Uh, support level would be around 29,500 to make it round numbers. Um, but you'll, you'll see it move. Of course, everything is news driven right now with crypto. Um, even the big ones, even ETH is news driven as well. 
keep your ear to the news if you want to trade crypto. Um, but the news is going to, going to drive uh, the TA up and down and drive the price action up and down as well. So that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks for that, GeForce. It's cool to see that even though you didn't have the conversations, but you're seeing the same thing as cryptics on the on the same charts, which is cool. So I think that's it. So yeah, again, thank you for everyone for being here on this TA Saturday's call. And thank you for, to our two TA gurus, Cryptics and GeForce, for their, their efforts throughout the week, not just on these calls, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware they'll have to go through and prepare these charts, make sure they look at what the requests are coming in throughout the week. And with that said, there will be a channel open up very soon in the server for those of you who are here with us. Go in, let us know what you want, whether it is the same coin or whether it's something new, uh, both on the crypto and the legacy side as well. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you at same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.